Hey, John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club in Portland, Oregon. Today we're going to cover the fourth of the four core compass skills, and that's taking a bearing to an object in the field and then plotting it on your map. There's two reasons why you might want to do this. One is to identify a landscape feature. Say you're on a mountaintop and you see a lake down below you and you want to know the name of the lake. If from your known location you take a bearing to that lake and then plot it correctly on your map, where that line intersects the lake has to be your feature on the map. The second case you might want to do this is to get yourself unlost. Say you're on a linear feature such as a road, a trail, or a stream, or a ridge line, and you're not sure where you are. If from that location you can take a bearing to a distant landscape object and then plot that bearing correctly on your map, where that line crosses your linear feature is going to be your approximate location. If you're not on a linear feature, you need to repeat this process to two or more landscape objects and then where those plotted lines cross is your approximate location. This technique is known as triangulation or resection. There are two important things to note when we do this. Anytime you're using your map and compass together, in this case measuring a bearing, or as we cover in lesson six, plotting a bearing, we're completely ignoring both the magnetic needle and the orienteering arrow. We're only interested in the numbers around the dial. First, a small note of caution. Many instructional books and instructional videos talk about triangulation as this magical way to get yourself unlost. In the real world, it has three distinct problems that you should be aware of. Problem one, if the visibility is low, like nighttime, thick forest, or cloud cover, you can't see anything to take a bearing to. Failure for triangulation. Problem two, if you can see an object around you, it may be indistinct and not clear in your map what you're looking at. You can't plot a line that you can't identify, and that's another fail for a triangulation. Problem number three, if you can see an object and you can plot it on your map, that object might be too far away and not appear on the map that you're carrying. That's another problem for a triangulation. For it to work, all three of these need to be in conjunction, and in a real-world scenario of you being lost, that's fairly unlikely. Having given you that cautionary note, let's look at a real-world example of using this to get yourself unlost. Say we're on this orange trail here, and we're not sure of our position, and we want to know where we are in the trail. Let's say off in the distance here is a mountain peak that we can see, we know the name of, and we can identify it on our map. If we take a bearing to that peak and then plot it correctly on our map, where the line crosses the trail is going to be our approximate location. Let's do it. Doing this is a simple two-step process. One, we take a bearing to the mountain peak, and two, plot it correctly on our map. Say from this trail, the bearing we take to the peak is 50 degrees. It could be any number between zero and 360. If we have our bearing on our compass of 50 degrees, we take one edge of our compass, put it on the mountain peak, and then holding it there with one hand or finger, rotate the compass base plate until N, north on the dial, is pointed to north on your map. If we then plot a line using your straight edge of the edge of the base plate, where that line crosses the trail is going to be our approximate location. So that's it for plotting a bearing on your map. To review, three-step process. One, take a bearing to an object in the field. Two, take the base plate of your compass Find that feature on your map and put the edge of the base plate on that feature. Then three, rotate the base plate slowly around until north on your compass dial points to north on your map.